So let's go create a row that corresponds to that part of our layout. We will use the row class to make our new row. This is the end of the row for the footer. And let's set up a 9 and 3 column layout inside this row. We'll use col small 9 for the first part. Oops. And we'll use col small 3 for the section that has that little lower hand logo. We'll call it logo bottom. So if we refer back to our design, what we have in here, we had some duplicate navigation uh, at the bottom and copyright information. Let's just put our copyright info down there. These are just standard text links, so we'll just put placeholder text for our copyright in the bottom down here. I'm going to use the ampersand copy semicolon to get the official C in a circle copy symbol. Creative company, all rights reserved. And in the bottom part, we will add that uh, bottom image that we had on the bottom right hand side of the page. Logo bottom. We can save that and see what we've got in the browser. So there's our all rights reserved. There's our logo at the bottom. Um, if we compare this to the original design, we've got two, two differences. Um, the first difference being that this bottom area is actually a darker shade of gray. So we're going to want to change the background color of that section of the page. And also we probably want uh, to put this logo on the far right hand side. So we might want to do a two column setup for this logo and then offset it by one like we did uh, earlier on in one of the earlier demos. So instead of doing column three, we're going to do a column two and then we're going to add a col small offset of one in order to move it to the right and get it to offset one. And to deal with the um, background color, for this entire row, we want that background color to be a darker gray. So let's go to that custom CSS that we had set up and let's create a class called gray. And we're just going to call it background color and we're just going to use generic browser gray. I'm going to save that, go back to my HTML and inside that row I'm going to add my gray class, the one that I just made. Let's save that and see what it does in our browser. Let's hit refresh. Ah, yes. So it's functioning. It's doing exactly what we wanted. Let's go find out what the exact color of that gray is. Now that we know that everything's working to our satisfaction, I'm going to hide my red bars and I'm going to grab my color picker. So that gray is E2, E2, E2. So let's set that up as our gray in our custom CSS. Let's save it and let's go refresh our browser and see what we got. Oh, beauteous. Beauteous. I'm not even sure if beauteous is a word, but I'll take it. So if we look back at our original layout here, uh, we've got uh, all of our columns and rows have been set up. We've got all of our functional navigation and content. Um, any other changes we would make from here would be um, things we would do in our custom CSS just to um, modify spacing, modify colors, we might want to change some fonts, um, things like that. Um, you'll notice that I have the um, orange coloring uh, with my navigation. If you use the default coloring that came with Bootstrap, those would be blue. Um, when you're setting up your Bootstrap, you do have an option of going into this customize area and you can customize all of the features that you may or may not be using if you want to make your files a little bit smaller and eliminate the things you're not needing. Um, and when you get down to the bottom, you can set all of the variables for the CSS. Now, Bootstrap uses the less CSS framework, so that's why some of these values um, 
some of these things don't look like standard CSS. Um, you could go learn the LESS framework and have the ability to use LESS version CSS code uh, in your Bootstrap project, but you don't have to, um, because most of these things you can find the color settings and adjust them to your liking. Uh, here we go. Scroll up, and in the colors section, it was the brand primary. Um, so your brand primary is the main color that is used as your primary accent color throughout the Bootstrap layout. Um, so if you set brand primary to be your color that you would like all of your main primary buttons and things to be, um, that will take care of that automatically. Um, then when you're finished setting any colors you'd like to set, uh, you can come down and compile and download that version of the Bootstrap layout, which will have your customizations in there. The only downside to doing it this way is that when a new version of Bootstrap comes out, if you upgrade by replacing your existing Bootstrap CSS with the new Bootstrap CSS, you're going to overwrite all of the original things you had changed here. Um, and the only way to fix that is to remember what you changed them to and go do it all again. Um, so you may want to stick to uh, updating things through the custom CSS that you attach to your page. Now if you want to find um, where a certain element is affected uh, in the custom CSS, um, I highly recommend using Google Chrome as your browser because what you can do is use their inspect element. Now I know all of the major browsers have some form of inspect element, but I really like the one that comes along with uh, Google Chrome. So if you were to, let's say, check out your navigation and right click on it, you can go to inspect element in Chrome and at the bottom it will highlight the element you had chosen and if we look at what we've got here here is the set of classes that are in use to modify the color right there so in your CSS you could copy and paste this into your CSS and change the color and background color to whatever you would like and that would override um, the CSS that is default in Bootstrap. So you can manually override anything you would like um, using your own custom CSS or if you want to learn the less CSS framework uh, you can learn that and then modify the CSS uh, via the less framework. But either way works equally well. At this point in our project what we would do is um, if we were going to use a Dreamweaver template to create the rest of our site, we could save this as a Dreamweaver template and then build all the rest of our pages from it. Um, we could just save these pages individually and then uh, save them with their appropriate names about portfolio, services, HTML, etc. Um, next steps, you would go link up all of your pages that you created um, to make your hyperlinks active. Um, you may go through and do some tweaking in your design with CSS to change fonts or change font sizes or change padding around certain things. Um, but essentially all of that is your creative tweaking. We've come up with um, our entire layout functioning in Bootstrap. Um, I do thoroughly encourage you to check out some of the additional features in Bootstrap. Um, if you go under Components and under JavaScript, there are lots of cool things that come with Bootstrap that are very easy to implement. Um, you can do breadcrumbs, you can do pagination. Um, some of the functionality under JavaScript, uh, one of my favorites is the carousel. Uh, it'll automatically create one of the moving photo slideshows for you. Um, and it's, it's a very nice layout. As you can see, it's all straight up HTML that you use to execute this. Um, it's, you could literally copy paste and browse to your appropriate uh, image files. Um, it's a very nice setup. Um, they've got uh, modal windows where if you click something, um, another window would pop up just like this. Um, they've got tool tips and popovers and alerts. They've got collapsible panels. If you used um, Spry within Dreamweaver, you might be familiar with the collapsible panels. As you see again, they are all just straight up HTML and CSS. There's nothing complicated to execute these. Uh, they've got tabbed interfaces, so if you'd like a tab interface. They've got built-in drop-down menus. This makes your life so much easier if you're dealing with a larger site that needs to have drop-downs. Um, they've got page transitions. Um, there is just lots of cool stuff built into uh, Twitter Bootstrap. So I highly recommend checking these out. All of the documentation is on the Bootstrap website. Um, all of it is easy to implement via straight up HTML and CSS. Um, I have a serious crush on Bootstrap. I'm a fan. Um, if you're interested in finding websites that were built with Bootstrap, uh, if you Google for Bootstrap examples, you will find all kinds of websites dedicated to 
um, highlighting sites that are made uh, with Bootstrap. So if we look at examples, um, Built with Bootstrap is a good one, Bootsnip is a good one, um, Love Bootstrap is another good one. Um, and these are just examples of websites out in the world that have been built using Twitter Bootstrap. So if you're looking for some inspiration and to see what you can do with uh, this framework, uh, I highly recommend checking out some of those examples. I hope you have enjoyed uh, building your first web page with the Twitter Bootstrap framework, and I hope you will continue to explore it a bit more, because there is a lot we can do with it. Thanks! Have a good one!